sanitation. Um, when looking for equipment, try to find things that have been tested and certified by recognized agencies such as the NSF, the CSA, or Underwriters Laboratory. Uh, large equipment, uh, one of our most common pieces of equipment is going to be our mixers. These are vertical mixers, also known as planetary mixers. Uh, most common type, okay, this is our standard five quart mixer. Um, this is our larger mixer here. Uh, vertical mixers have three attachments, a dough hook, a paddle, and a whip. Okay, the whip is for incorporating air um, or whipping, beating products. Uh, paddle is general mixing, most common. Uh, yeast products is going to be for our dough hook there. Um, this is our spiral mixer. Um, it is designed for large amounts of dough, specifically yeast doughs. Um, the way it works is this attachment, um, of course this goes down on top of the bowl, the attachment will rotate, the bowl will rotate at the same time. Um, this is going to reduce friction on our yeast stoves, which is really important. Um, we'll start to talk about that in chapters 5 and 6. A horizontal mixer is an incredibly large uh, mixer for several thousand pounds of dough at a time. Um, so instead of a dough hook, they have these arms on here, so the dough gets pulled and stretched um, in a different kind of manner. There's a donut video that I'll show you guys um, during week five. Dough handling equipment. Um, so different things to treat our yeast doughs. A dough fermentation trough um, is going to hold a dough during fermentation and keep it at an ideal temperature. Um, a divider is going to cut pieces of dough into equal portions. Um, I showed you guys the divider cutter um, when we had our big shop tour. Um, this is our divider rounder. This is what it looks like. So um, a divider rounder does the same thing as a divider. It cuts the dough into equal pieces, um, but it also can round the dough into neat little um, pre-shaped dough uh, balls, if you will. Um, this is our dough sheeter. Um, it's nice because it will roll dough into uniform thickness in a quick, efficient manner um, without having to warm the dough up too much um, or handle the dough too much. Um, so the dough will go on one side, you press the button, it goes through the other side. This handle changes the number, which can control how thick or how thin you're going to roll your dough out. This is a molder, um, so it can mold loaves of bread for you. Um, so you just put a piece of bread into the top and then out of the bottom pops a perfectly shaped uh, baguette or loaf. Um, something that we don't use in class ever um, because we are supposed to be using our hands for molding. So this is something for really, really large bread operations. Uh, this is a proofer. Okay, so controls uh, the conditions for our yeast doughs through uh, humidity and through temperature. So yeast doughs like a nice warm temperature um, and humidity so that they don't dry out or form a crust on top. Retarder and a retarder proofer. Okay, a retarder is a refrigeration unit. Okay, with high levels of humidity. Okay, again, we're trying to prevent our doughs from drying out. Um, so a retarder is used to hold doughs um, at a cold temperature with high humidity. A retarder proofer can work as a proof box or as a retarder, um, or it can do both for you. Um, it's when you set up the settings, um, it can proof and retard your dough um, as needed. Deck ovens, okay. <clears throat> uh, our deck oven here, um, also known as a hearth oven, uh, breads are being baked directly on top of that surface there, okay? Um, there are no racks, so each of those shelves kind of act like an oven rack in there. Uh, this is a rack oven, okay? Uh, I, like, I always call this our rotating rack oven because the whole entire rack goes into the oven. 
um, gets picked up and then rotates around inside that that oven. So <clears throat> a rack oven. Um, there's also a mechanical oven. Um, so the food will be in motion while it's baking. Um, the most common is a revolving oven. So in s the shelves in there are going to rotate around so the product bakes evenly. Convection ovens um, are most of the standard ovens we have at school in all of our kitchens. Um, they contain fans in the back of the oven um, that's going to circulate airflow. So that helps to keep the oven super hot, heat up quickly, um, and it bakes things really efficiently also. So you got to be kind of careful um, <clears throat> when you're using a convection oven. Uh, this is a steam jacketed kettle. Um, it works kind of like a big giant double boiler where steam will enter through these tubes and heat up the bottom of this bowl um, so you can make custards, creams, different fillings. Um, and then this handle here um, will allow you to, I'm sorry, pull that uh, lever down so you can pour out your pastry cream or your creme anglaise, your ice cream base. Okay, a fryer. Um, used for donuts, of course, fried items. Um, that's our donut hopper here that gets pushed over the top of the fryer to dispense donuts right into the hot oil. Um, these are some of our specialty molds. There are a lot of specialty small things in the bake shop. Um, a baba mold is making for a baba barquette. Um, is like a small tart mold. Okay? A charlotte mold is for making a charlotte cake, a sponge cake, if you will. Banneton baskets are for proofing breads, and they kind of take on some of that indentation from the bowl. Um, loaf pans. Um, this is a Pullman loaf pan that has that, that top slide on top, so you can get a really nice square. Um, or if you're using the loaf pan, you'll get kind of that classic round loaf on top. Uh, Madeline pan is for making Madeline cookies, okay? Um, so Madeline's are like a sponge. Um, it's almost like a sponge cake, um, but it's considered a cookie, I guess. Um, seashell shape, really delicate, very delicious. Um, I consider it to be in a petty four category, something that we work on in intermediate and also advanced baking. Um, that is a Savarin mold. Okay, springform pans used for cheesecakes. Tart pans are used for tarts, quiches. Um, tube pan is going to be our cheese, uh, I'm sorry, our angel food cake pan. There we are. Um, blowtorch, believe it or not, very handy tool for the bake shop, used very often um, to warm things up, to get them out of molds, with sugar work, uh, many different reasons for us to use a blowtorch. Um, a bench brush um, used for the sheeter or for a, a wooden bench, uh, preferably um, something that's meant to stay dry and only touch flour. Um, this is an icing comb. It has different sides with different um, kind of this zigzag pattern on it. Um, so you can drag that across the surface of um, a cake or different things to kind of decorate your icing and give it kind of a different effect. Cookie cutters and pastry cutters, of course, for cutting cookies out. Um, and donuts we use for our cookie cutters. Um, I usually just call them circle cutters. Um, this is a roller cutter, so it has kind of this triangle shape so you can roll it across your dough to cut many portions at one time. Um, this is a peel um, used for taking bread or pizzas out of the oven. Um, a roller docker is a piece of equipment that looks kind of medieval. It's got all these spikes on the end. It's meant to roll across the dough, the surface of the dough, to prick it. Um, sometimes we don't want our dough to rise too much. Like in the case of a pie, we want to have enough filling. We want to make sure that that crust doesn't rise too much. So if we roll the surface um, and poke it with all these holes, it's going to prevent that dough from rising too much. Rolling pins you guys are familiar with. Um, they also make textured rolling pins. Um, so if you wanted to 
create a pattern on a cookie um, or on fondant for a wedding cake. Um, they have textured rolling pins. Bench scraper is going to be typically a flat-sided scraper. Um, this is a metal one used for portioning dough. Um, great for cutting through the dough. Um, our bowl scraper is going to be ideally used for scraping the bowls of the mixers to get all of that little dough and any of your, <clears throat> excuse me, any of your batters um, picked out so that we're not feeding the French family, right? <laughs> um, that last guy here is our sieve or our drum sieve, also known as a tammy, okay, tammy sifter. Um, those are very expensive pieces of equipment. Um, it's a fine mesh at the bottom there. Um, generally should not ever be washed, um, always kept dry. Um, and they're great for sifting large quantities of flour very quickly or powdered sugar. Um, turntables we use to decorate cakes and pastries. Um, a whip or a whisk for incorporating air. Um, so acetate um, is a clear type of plastic. Um, acetate is used um, only for lining molds um, and doing decoration work. It's not something that can be cooked with. Okay, so if you're going to make a frozen mousse um, in a ring mold, you would put some acetate on the inside of that ring mold. Um, and then pour your mousse inside, let it freeze, and then you can remove that acetate. It's going to pull off nice and clean. Um, so kind of a non-stick, clear plastic, not meant for cooking. Okay, another type of non-stick that we use um, is our silpats. Okay, a silpat um, is a non-stick baking mat. Okay, um, so silicone mat here. Hey, okay, don't get confused between our silicone mat, our parchment paper, um, and our acetate. Okay, these are all very different things. A couche is um, a heavy linen used for um, breads fermentation. It allows uh, air to circulate through it, um, so it's ideal for fermenting breads. <clears throat> A hydrometer, sugar densimeter, sacrometer um, is used to tense the density of the sugar syrup. So checking the concentration of a sugar uh, solution. Um, ice cream freezer, of course, used to freeze ice cream and churn ice cream. Uh, the marble is something we use in chocolate work and in candy making. Um, parchment paper, baking paper, and silicone paper. Okay, um, those all come in different grades. Those are uh, meant for baking, yes. Um, they are non-stick. They are not reusable. Okay, a silicone mat um, or a silpat, um, that's something that's a non-stick um, that can be baked with. Okay. Um, cooling racks uh, we use for cooling products. Um, thermometers come in different uh, different styles. Uh, chocolate thermometers, uh, sugar thermometers are meant, um, like I said, to check the density or the concentration of sugar in a solution. All right.